Thank you, Mr. Courtney. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, just to go back to a point Mr. Cooper made, one of the things that moved it up on the food chain was a unanimous resolution in the United States Senate on March 1st, bipartisan sponsorship calling for us to execute a no-fly zone. So um, in addition to all the other voices from the U.N. and the Arab League, um, Congress actually was joining in in, in terms of uh, uh, act, calling on the, on the executive branch to act. Um, you know, and, and you can get whiplash around here. And I, and I would just add, Mr. Courtney, including both Republicans and Democrats in the House calling for a no-fly zone as well. Thank you. I mean, when this, this hearing should be happening and there should be questions asked um, that, that, you know, something this big uh, deserves all the scrutiny um, that uh, we can give it. Uh, but you can get sort of whiplash around here trying to keep up with the, the positions of, of some people on it. Um, one thing I think we could do that is very useful is to pass a defense budget for the rest of uh, 2011. Um, and I, again, I think you were a little gentle, Mr. Secretary, in terms of saying the impact on, on um, the Defense Department in terms of this operation is, is not going to be that um, large. Because this morning, Secretary Mavis was at a shipbuilding caucus talking about the fact that we right now have a global fleet that is deployed in the Arabian Sea, the Mediterranean obviously is part of this operation, uh, in the Pacific uh, providing support in, in Japan. Um, yet because of not doing a 2011 budget, we have availabilities um, that are now uh, being canceled. Uh, and this is a fleet that is at maximum tempo right now, and the Navy can't reset like other parts of the military. They got to do it as you go, as you go here. And, um, and I, I think that certainly these operations, and I know for a fact because one of the submarines that was deployed in the Mediterranean is the USS Providence out of uh, Groton, uh, the Scranton and the Florida were also part of that operation. Um, they are law, they're pretty out there in terms of their deployment and they need to get refitted. And, and um, again, I didn't, I, I, I just would maybe give you another opportunity to talk about the fact that we've got to get this done um, to, again, just keep the, all the pieces that are out there moving, particularly with our fleet. It's, uh, it, it's all of the services in the, in the Navy. It's not just that we're not being able to start some ships that were part of the program. Right. Um, some of the maintenance can, uh, contracts have had to be canceled. Uh, just to your point about, about uh, availability of ships, as I said earlier, no military construction uh, for FY11 at this point. Uh, and, and every one of the services, we're, we're reaching the point where we may have to uh, ramp down significantly the activities at the depots at Red River and, uh, and elsewhere. So I mean, you look at every service and the consequences of the continuing resolution uh, are being felt. One thing I'd like to add, and I, I have not had this discussion with my boss, so I'm a little loath to have it publicly, but it's for the first time since I've been in this job, which is uh, three and a half years, uh, I know the Navy is considering essentially recommending not deploying some ships scheduled for deployment. So it's just another impact of, and it's, and it's purely financial right now, right. to look uh, at can we get through this year? And what isn't visible in all this, and I have been around money a lot in my career, is just the contraction that's going on inside all the services as they play the what if this doesn't happen. Uh, and in that regard, very conservative assumptions uh, with respect to executing the rest of this budget. Thank you. You know, we talk about equipment and everything, but just one further thing, just to bring it home to, to the to the average service man or woman, the Navy has had a policy for a long time of getting six months' notice for PCS moves. Because of the money constrictions, they have now shrunk that to two months, so a real impact on families. Um, just one quick follow-up. Uh, with the handoff to NATO today and the fact that the unique capabilities which the President described in his speech the other night were part of the operation at the, at the outset. The ramp down in terms of cost, I mean, part of the, what's driving that is the fact that we are sort of easing back, uh, again, Tomahawk missile um, uh, attacks, which again were sort of the high cost front end parts of this operation. And, and I mean, that explains at least something we can take back to the American people that there really will be a reduced cost because we're not doing the same stuff that we're, we uniquely were capable of doing at the outset. 
It is absolutely right. And it is and it's really not a, an easing back. It is it's a pretty significant ramp down over the next uh, couple of weeks.